Good evening and welcome to the March 26, 2024 Old Bridge Township Council meeting. Please rise for a pledge of allegiance and please remain standing for a moment of silence and for our prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. We always remember those who are fighting for our freedoms, both here and abroad, our first responders, those who have made the ultimate sacrifice, and this evening for the tragedy in Maryland. Everyone, please give us a moment of silence. Our prayer, Mr. Paschetti. Dear Lord, bless thy servants in the Ministry of Public Affairs who serve thee in this chamber. Give us quiet minds and hearts that we may hear your voice. Help us to know when to speak, when to be silent. Give us strength to oppose the wrong and uphold the right. Grant that we have a good conscience and at peace with each other and one another. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Please mess that up. Please mess that up. Roll call. Councilperson Asatuli. Yeah. Councilperson DeCaro. Here. Councilperson De Palma. Here. Councilperson Desai. Let the record reflect Councilperson Desai is absent. Councilperson Garcia. Here. Councilperson Murphy is also absent. Councilperson Pasquitti. Here. Council Vice President Dr. Greenberg Belli. Here. And Council President Sohar. Here. This meeting is being held in conformance with the Open Public Meetings Act. Notice has been given to the official newspapers of the township on January 6, 2024. It has been posted in public places. Next open public meeting of the township council will be held on Tuesday, April 9, 2024 at 7.30 p.m. Thank you. And welcome, everyone, to the meeting. Um, this evening we are going to be honoring some athletes. And uh, Mayor Walker, are you ready? Okay. Welcome. Uh, once again, we're honored to uh, honor our Old Bridge Camp Robin speed skating. Once again, they won quite a few awards this year. The Old Bridge Robin speed skating team has been competing in the Special Olympics for well over 35 years. During that time, there have been many athletes from our township that have, been, have competed in various speed skating events and have been extremely successful. This year is no different, as our speed skating team had 15 athletes that competed in the Special Olympic Winter Games. While there are several different sports that are involved in the Special Olympic Winter Games, the speed skating competition continues to be one of the most exciting and challenging, and our athletes continue to excel at the event each and every year. All of these athletes competed in two speed skating events, and each of them did extremely well in their individual events. We're here to recognize not only the athletes for their outstanding accomplishments, but the coaches and chaperones for all their hard work and dedication that they continue to give each and every year, and for the entire team doing a great job of representing Old Bridge Township. I'd like to call up Coach Rich Antonizzi for all the hard work he does. We want to thank him every year. Thank you so much. Coach is going to give out our certificates. The coaches are first. I just want to take a moment to thank you, Mayor, and the township for recognizing the athletes. Uh, you've done this every year, and it's quite an honor, and, and the athletes really, uh, really appreciate it. Our township uh, really leads the path in uh, Special Olympics in the Winter Games because our township is the only one, really, that participates in speed skating because we have the rink. And uh, so we lead everything. Uh, if it wasn't for us, there would be no speed skating event in, uh, in the Winter Games. So thank, uh, thank you, and thanks the township for having our, uh, our rink. Um, this is, uh, before I, I go to the coaches, I just want to thank the parents as well, uh, because we wouldn't have a team if the parents didn't provide the athletes and show up every single Saturday 
uh, regardless if it's uh, 40 below or not. So I want to thank you all for uh, participating. <laughs> Our program continues to grow. Uh, this year we had 19 athletes, 15 of which uh, competed in the Winter Games. So hopefully this program will continue and uh, we'll have a lot more in, in the years to come. Uh, I want to thank uh, the coaches because certainly without their help and support, I couldn't do this on my own. Um, I've been doing this for 22 years, and it's, uh, it's amazing to look at some of these athletes and see how young they were and how far they've grown. So I really want to thank all the coaches for their help. First one up, Dan Antonazzi. Next one up is uh, Jenna Gonzalez. Uh, she's not here. <laughs> Matt Rosalie. He's not here with us. And Mike Senatiempo. He's not with us all. They're all out training right now to help them. We're always busy. 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 Yeah. Uh, I want to thank the chaperones because, again, without them, it would be hard-pressed to, uh, to do the work that we do. Uh, the chaperones attended the Winter Games with us and helped us uh, coordinate the activities with the athletes and such. So uh, their work is, is really uh, amazing. Uh, first up, Claudia Puccio. Thank you so much, Claudia. Uh, Claudia was instrumental, and I should also thank Special Projects for Special Children, because they're the ones that funded uh, our team getting all of our new uniforms this year. And Claudia was the one who did all the work. Uh, Richard Grant, you want to come up for him? That's Richard's wife. It's good to see you. Thank you. Laura Chaffee. Congratulations. Thank you so much for your help. Thank you so much. Rochelle Zeller. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think I know this person, Annette Antonazzi. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you athletes. Athletes. Yes. Okay. We had uh, three new athletes this year that were never on skates before. And uh, when you stop to think about the nature of speed skating sport, for these individuals to not be on skates before and achieve the results that they did is really amazing. Uh, first one up is Christina. She won the gold on the 500 meter and 300 meter. Congratulations. Hey, just stand up on the side. Stephanie Puccio, gold in the 500 meters and gold in the 300 meters. Congratulations. Congratulations. Tyler Engelhart, he didn't make it. 500, uh, gold on the 500 meter and gold in the 700 meter. Sal Lapino, gold in the 500 meter, gold in the 300 meter. Congratulations. Congratulations. See all your hard work paid off. <laughs> Yamaj, silver, 500, silver, 300. Dylan Madrid is not with us. He had a bronze in the 500 and a bronze in the 300. Paul Pantano, gold in the 500 meter and fourth place in the 300. I'm going to save him for last. Jimmy Smith, silver, 500 meters, gold in the 300 meter.
Nicholas Grant, gold in the 500 meter, silver 300 meter. Okay, there you go. Thank you, Richard. You're welcome. <laughs> Mark Zeloff, gold in the 500 meter, gold in the 300 meter. Mark. Here, yeah, Mark. There you go. Bobby V, gold in the 25 meter and gold in the 100 meter. Tommy Antonazzi, gold in the 25 meter, gold in the 100 meter. Gina Chaffee, gold in the 100 meter, gold in the 300 meter. Congratulations, Gina. Shri Chawa, gold in the 100 meter, gold in the 300 meter. And last and certainly not least, Chris McMullen, gold in the 500 meter, gold in the 700 meter. Now I saved, I saved Chris for last because Chris next month is going to be going to Salt Lake City uh, to participate in the training of the World Games. So Chris will be going to Italy to participate in the World Games on the speed skating team. I told him his first job was to invite his coach along, but that didn't happen yet. But he's representing our township in Italy at the, winter, at the World Games. That's it. Yeah. Thank you all for coming, and hope to see you again next year. More awards. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you all so much for being here. And we're very Old Bridge proud. And we look forward to all the things that you'll be doing in the future. Thank you again to the coaches and the chaperones. It really is a wonderful, wonderful organization. We'll take a two minute break here to let everyone leave. And then we'll continue with the body of the meeting. Have a good night. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we have one more presentation. Councilman Garcia. Yes, hi. However you want to do it, Kevin. It's good. Yeah, you're good. I know. Guys, let's give them another hand. That was great. Yes. Yes. That was great. Guys, I...
I have a proclamation for the COVID victims. Uh, I'll read it. Hopefully, I don't mess it up too much. Uh, it's a proclamation, whereas the month of March is to be declared annually as COVID-19 Awareness Month by the Township of Oldbridge, and whereas COVID-19 SARS-CoV-2 is an illness caused by a virus that can transmit from person to person and has spread across the world, creating a global pandemic and having catastrophic effects on human life, our, our community, and our economy. And whereas in March 2020, communities in every state began to experience increased life of loss, well, I should say loss of life, and families lost parents, spouses, siblings, children, friends, and neighbors from the virus. And whereas public health guidance and policies targeted at prevention, such as social distancing, wearing masks in public, and staying hoped helped mitigate the spread of COVID-19, prevented illness, and lessened the burden on individuals and society, and whereas local, state, tribal, and federal government entities and public servants took swift action to protect the health of the public and provided critical support to businesses, communities, and the people of the United States in need. And whereas, in response to the rapid spread of COVID-19 and its disruptions, essential workers stepped up to provide critical services to help protect our communities and save lives, sacrificing their own health and safety, and whereas the symptoms and severity of COVID-19 can vary dramatically by individual and the long-term health implications for survivors is largely unknown, as many survivors suffer from post-acute issues following affection, and whereas each life lost to COVID-19 leaves a hole in the hearts of loved ones, family members, and the surrounding community, and now, therefore, Debbie Walker, Mayor of the Township of Oldbridge, Town Council, County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, do hereby proclaim March 24 as COVID-19 Awareness Month in remembrance of the victims and survivors of COVID, their friend and family, and in honor of those who continue to suffer from the impacts of this virus. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the Great Seal of Oldbridge Township to be affixed on this 26th day of March in the year 2024, Mayor Debbie Walker. That's all. really means so much to me and to my wife. She's looking down and all the other victims from Old Bridge and tomorrow is my wife's birthday. Definitely happy birthday to have her day. She's smiling down saying thank you for looking down. Well thank you. <clears throat> thank you for being here with us this evening. Okay, have a good evening. Thank you very much. Approval of minutes. Resolution approving council meeting minutes of July 11th, August 8th, September 12th, and October 10th. These are rule 2023. Move it. Second. Okay, moved by Dr. Greenberg Belli, second by Mr. De Palma. Roll call. Councilperson Asatuli? Yes. Councilperson DeCaro? Yes. Councilperson De Palma? Yes. Councilperson Desai? Is absent. Councilperson Garcia? Yes. Councilperson Pasquitti? Yes. Council Vice President Dr. Greenberg Belli? Yes. And Council President Sohar? Yes. Bill List, Mr. Garcia? Yes, thank you. Bill List as of March 26, 2024. Accounts payable March 26, 2024, $13,300,911 and 59 cents. Payroll March 15, 2024, $1,280,812 and 54 cents. Payroll overtime March 15, 
$28,108.16. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, can we have a breakdown of the overtime, please? Sure, Council President. Thank you. There were no major upticks in our regular overtime. Sworn police overtime was $18,898.91. Deduct grants, $794.44. Deduct ETO, $7,212.54 for a total of $10,891.93. We had two special events during that time period, and we have three officers on light duty, light duty currently. Thank you. Thank you. I need a motion. Move it. Second. Moved by Dr. greenberg Belli. second by Mr. Peschetti. Roll call, Councilperson Assatuli. Yes. Councilperson DeCaro. Yes. Councilperson De Palma. Yes. Councilperson Garcia. Yes. Councilperson Pasquitti. Yes. Council Vice President Dr. Greenberg Belli. Yes. Council President Sohar. Yes. Seven yeses. Next will be our consent agenda. I'd like to get a motion and a second and then go back for separations. Second. Moved by Dr. Greenberg Belli, second by Mr. Pasquitti. Councilperson Assatuli, any items for separation? No, thank you. Councilperson DeCaro, any items? No, thank you. Councilperson De Palma? No, thank you. Councilperson Garcia? None, thank you. Councilperson Pasquitti? No separations, thank you. Council Vice President Dr. Greenberg Belli? No, thank you. Council President Sohar? No, thank you. So the two resolutions on the consent agenda uh, Councilperson Assatuli? Yes. Councilperson DeCaro? Yes. Councilperson De Palma? Yes. Councilperson Garcia? Yes. Councilperson Pasquitti? Yes. Council Vice President Dr. Greenberg Belli? Yes. And Council President Sohar? Yes. I'd Seven. like to just switch this. Up. Can we do the report of the Township Clerk, please? I have no report. Township Attorney report? No report. Administrative report? Anna? Yes. Thank you. Draft 2024 CDBG Annual Action Plan. Oldbridge Township has prepared a Draft 2024 Annual Action Plan for the Community Development Block Grant Funding Program. The 2024 Draft Annual Action Plan addresses and contains Oldbridge's housing, non-housing needs, objectives, proposed projects, and other required statements, and is available for review and comment between April 1st, 2024 through April 30th, 2024. Residents may submit their comments through mail, email, telephone, or in person Monday through Friday between 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Comments will be accepted until April 30th, 2024. Excuse me, April 24th. The plan is available for public inspection during regular township hours at the Office of the Business Administrator and online at oldbridge.com slash projects. On April 18, 2024, a public hearing will be held on the 2024 Annual Action Plan at 3 p.m. in the Oldbridge Township Administration Building, located at 1 Oldbridge Plaza, Oldbridge, New Jersey, 08857, on the second floor in Conference Room 217. Interested parties may attend the hearing and present their comments on the draft plan. 2023 Annual Road Resurfacing Program. On March 25, 2024, Oberich Township contractor PNA Construction Inc. began upgrading the handicap ramp ramps at the intersections of Eleanor Street, Helene Street, Johnson Street, Truman Street, Carroll Place, Jennifer Lane, Shelley Road, Crabtree Road, Caitlin Court, Samantha Court, Britton Avenue, and Miller Avenue. The work is anticipated to take three to four weeks to complete, weather permitting. To review the project plans and the list of roads included in this contract, please visit oldbridge.com slash projects. 2020, 2023 Annual Curb Replacement Program. On Tuesday, March 26, Oldbridge Township contractor Crossroads Paving will begin, begin drainage improvements and curb repla replacement on Arbutus Way. Work on this road it is anticipated to take one to two weeks to complete, weather permitting. To view project plans and the list of roads included in this contract, please visit oldbridge.com slash projects. Chief Montagna announces police department promotions. Chief Thomas Montagna is proud to announce the promotion of two officers. Sergeant Robert Mazaluski was promoted to rank of lieutenant, and police officer Christopher Hamill was promoted to the rank of sergeant on March 15, 2024. We extend our congratulations to each of them and their families.
Mayor Walker's health and wellness 5K race honors hometown heroes. The Mayor's Health and Wellness Council, in collaboration with All Around Old Bridge, will be hosting a 5K race and a kids dash honoring our, our hometown heroes. It will be held on Saturday, April 20th at the Municipal Complex. The race will start at 8 a.m. The kids dash will start at 9 a.m. Also, there will be a health and wellness fair in the Ice Arena parking lot from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Please note that due to this event, the Lowbridge Library will open at 11 a.m. that day. For more information and to register, please visit obridge.com 5K. Finally, Obridge Township Municipal Offices will be closed on March 29th. As a reminder, all township offices will be closed on Friday, March 29th in observance of Good Friday. On behalf of the Obridge Township Council, Mayor, Administration, and staff, we wish our residents a happy Easter. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions or comments for Anna? Okay, then we'll vote to approve the um, administrative report. Move. Move. Okay. Second. Moved by Dr. Greenberg Bell, I second by Mr. DePama. Roll call. Councilperson Asituli? Yes. Councilperson DeCaro? Yes. Councilperson DePama? Yes. Councilperson Garcia? Yes. Councilperson Pasquitti? Yes. Council Vice President Dr. Greenberg Belli? Yes. Council President Sohar? Yes. Seven yeses. Okay, next will be discussion ordinance Oaks 1 General Development Plan. Good evening, ladies. Good evening, everyone. Um, so as you may recall, I was here almost a year ago, uh, and I had made a presentation regarding the Oaks One General Development Plan. But I, I know there are new members, and it's been over a year. So before uh, Mark and I introduce uh, the ordinance, I just wanted to uh, refresh everyone's memory based on what was presented before. So. Oaks One General Development Plan is um, the area where we recently opened the shop ride and where Target is located too. That is the commercial component of the General Development Plan. Right behind the shop ride, um, there was a plan that was approved almost 25 years ago for multifamily uh, development. There was medium density and then there was medium high density residential units that were approved. And then between that area and the industrial section of the township were the single family homes. So the general development plan had roughly 600,000 square feet of commercial space and 1,300, roughly 1,312 residential units of which 256 units were single family um, homes that are being built by Havnanian. At the next meeting, you will have two ordinances to review. The first ordinance is related to the single family homes. We all know that some of those homes have been occupied. Um, homeowners are anxious to uh, build their patios and decks. What has happened is when the general development plan was approved, it was approved based on the 1983 ordinance, the SFT5 zone. That SFT5 zone did not contemplate patios and decks or accessory structures. When there is a regulation missing, and this is an overlay, you always have to rely on the underlying zone and the zoning standards. Unfortunately, the underlying zone is the ETO3 and the SD3 zone, which is SD3 is the special development, which is our indus industrial commercial zone. EDO3 is the non-residential zone that is along our Route 9 and uh, Route 18 corridor. These do not allow accessory structures uh, which are related to a single family home. So then, decks and patios are not permitted. And so the zoning officer has been denying all the permits. I think it's time for us to revisit that section 
the best idea would be to uh, change the zoning to R5 because SFD5 was based off the R5 zone. If we allow, if we rezone this to R5 zone, we will not ha have issues with the decks and patios and we will be able to issue permits. So that's one ordinance. The second one is, um, uh, is more complicated. Um, this was an there was an application filed in front of the planning board almost two years ago for an amended general development plan. Um, the medium density and the medium high density development was taken over by Edgewood Properties and they were proposing changes to the approved JDP. The changes were mostly related to the bedroom count. Uh, there was a one bedroom, two bedroom, and three bedroom composition. Now they wanted to reduce one and two bedrooms and build more of three bedrooms without changing the total number of units. So the total number of units would still remain uh, 1,056. However, they wanted to change the bedroom composition. The one thing, because when I saw that, my instant reaction was more bedroom, if there are more three bedroom units, then which means there are more school kids and more impacts. But actually, when the original GDP was approved, the, there were two bedroom units with dens. So there was already an additional room. The developer is just proposing to change that into another bedroom. I live in a similar community. Most of these uh, dens are converted into bedrooms and people start using them as three bedrooms. We, uh, I also noticed that the concept that was presented was a concept of almost 30 years ago. So the planning style, the design style had changed. What he was proposing was garden style apartments. He didn't want to change that concept. That is what was approved 30 years ago. So we had a meeting with a developer and we wanted to work with him change the building type, change the style to make it more uh, palatable to the other homes or the other projects that Old Bridge is building. I have worked with him for over a year now. We have come up with a concept which is much more acceptable. There is more open space that has been created with the new concept. Originally, the multifamily buildings that were right behind ShopRite and Target were like I called them barracks and he was very offended when I said that, but they looked like barracks. There was no open space between those buildings. They were just the regular garden style apartments of the 70s. So now what we have done through this new design is along Schumeister, there will be a couple of buildings that will be taller, so that will be four story. Rest all will be three stories so that it creates like a boulevard-like effect. And that gives us more open space. We have created central open spaces between buildings. He has added more recreational element, uh, amenities. Uh, there was a dog park that was added. There were basketball courts that were added. Uh, there were pickleball courts that were added to the clubhouse. So we have worked with him to create this design with more recreational element. Even the style of the buildings has changed immensely. They are no longer uh, the garden style apartments. There are almost four categories wherein you have quadruplexes, which were the affordable units that were approved and had to be built as part of the Havnanian homes. Uh, there are townhouses. There are stacked townhouses, and then there is the regular multifamily building. The, um, the look of it is much more current. The material that is being used, like we're working with him still to fine tune the architecturals, but that will be more modern. And also, if I'm not mistaken, former Mayor Henry had said that the developer is willing to contribute $3,000 per unit for um, recreational amenities elsewhere in the town. So that money can be used to develop other parks or recreational elements. So that's the ordinance that I'm working on. Um, you will see it at uh, probably not the next meeting, but the following meeting, um, next week meeting being the budget meeting. But these are the two ordinances. And um, 
the planning board application for Edgewood is on hold until uh, I clean up the ordinance, we have an ordinance in place, and we can move forward with the planning board a hearing process. Yeah, we can't change what was done 25 years ago, and that doesn't fit today. This is much more pleasurable to look at, and they are given a lot of money for recreation throughout the town. So I think we're getting a better look. They have also worked with me on adding walking trails and sidewalks within the community, so that is another plus. Everybody okay? We're good? Just real quick, um, so there was there's 1,056 single yeah. family units, you said? No, no, no. Okay. So there is 1,312 uh, total dwelling units, out of which 256 are single family homes that are being built by Havnanian, and then there is 1,056 units that are built by Edgewood Properties. Right. Okay, all right, that's where I got the number. Okay, so that's... Right, um, oh. I was just curious, does the developer, is was there any kind of study as to like how many new children will be, like, you know, I'm just thinking about schools, So you know. And, so and the as part of the planning board application, he will have to submit a community impact study, which will include, uh, you know, the impact to the population, the school, um, from what I recollect because I had just briefly looked at their original submission and then I was like no this can't you know I don't like the design itself and I call it barracks and that's when he, he pulled out and we started working together from what I remember the the school impact wasn't significant uh, especially because there were units that were already that already had that additional den. The multipliers also have changed. So generally, when we come up with the school impact or the population impact, the ent all the municipalities or all the planners in New Jersey, we rely on Rutgers multiplier. Rutgers comes up with these multipliers. Apparently, uh, 30 years ago, when those multipliers were done, they were a bit on the higher sign. In 2018, Rutgers re-evaluated their multipliers. The multipliers are much less. So when you compare the school kids, that there weren't many school kids that were generated because of the change in the multipliers. No problem. Okay, and that, that study is to be coming. It's it's. The, they haven't done it yet. The Rutgers Good. study is completed. The multipliers have been established. Right. But when any application gets filed to the planning board, they have to submit a community impact mm -hmm. study. Mm -hmm. And that is reviewed by me when I review the planning board application. So when they go in front of the board, I will be looking at the study and reviewing it. OK, we're all set. I just want to reiterate that it is unfortunate that we have to deal with a general development plan from so many years yes. ago that there should be a timeline from the state that it does expire. Yes. So, hooker by crook, this is something we have to deal with. Yes. But I do want to thank you because I do appreciate you to look at it and realize what they were proposing is not aesthetically pleasing for the town. It would not work anymore. Times have changed and that you're getting a lot in return for, for the amenities. It's just what we have to live with, and you've done the, really your due diligence, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. Peschetti? Yes, hi. Hi. Thank you. Um, on that uh, rezoning of the S to the R5. Yes. Right? What, what's the, what area is that exactly? What's the boundary of that rezoning? That would be only to those 256 homes that are being built by Havnanian. So that is the portion. And the underlying zone, when I, because I was trying to see how I can help the residents, it's not fair that they have these million dollar homes and can't put patios or decks or do anything with their backyards. But the underlying zone is the economic development opportunity zone and the SD3 zone. Right. So w what we will have to do, I mean, I'll have to work closely with Mark because this whole area with Edgewood and Havnanian would have to be rezoned and 
probably for Edgewood, we'll have to create a new zone. I hate doing that because we already have 43 zones. Mark and I have always talked about it. If anything, I want to condense them. But in this case, I don't think there is any other option than creating a separate zone. So yes. And they're going to put, they're going to donate $3,000 per unit. Who, who, yes. Who says, doing, who's doing that? Edgewood. Edgewood. So that's 256 units? Times 3,000? No, no. More than that. Over 1,000. 1,056. 1,056 times, wow. Yes. That's yes. a lot of money. That's yes. great. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank right. you. Yes. Well done. Okay, we're okay, everyone? All right, well, thank you again. This was thank a very, you. very thank important you. conversation that needed to be had. Thank okay, you. Okay, so are we going to go to move these up for first reading? No? Okay, I just want to make sure. Yeah, there we go. Yep. The public comment portion of our meeting is to allow the public to bring to the council's attention their concerns or comments. This section is open for any topic or items in the consent agenda. In accordance with NJSA 10 colon 4-12A and the Old Bridge Rules of Council, the council asks the public to limit their comments to three minutes or less. Only one member of the public shall approach to speak to council at a time. The council will respect the public's time by refraining from any comment until the speaker is finished with their allotted time. Should be further noted that the public comment portion of our meeting is not structured as a question and answer session. If a member of the public has questions they seek answers to, an appointment can be made with the corresponding department's office during regular business hours. The township clerk will regulate the time during the comment portion of our meeting. As you approach the microphone, please state whether you are a resident of Oldbridge and no names and addresses, please. Is there anyone in the public who wishes to be heard this evening? Good evening. Uh, I just wanted to talk to you about uh, where we live, our road to Joy Lane. I believe my my mother and my aunt were here the other day, expressed their concerns about our road. Uh, we've all been residents of this town for, I've born here, raised. Uh, my mother, my father were both born and raised here. Uh, we love the town. Uh, our road is in disrepair. And in previous years, the town has always came and graded it, snow plowed it and taking care of it. So it's come to our attention now that the town says, you're on your own, we don't want nothing to do with you. Which I don't think is fair for us when you guys have taken care of it for so long. Um, it's a hazard. If anybody has to get back there for any emergency, they're not gonna wanna do it. And we are not, um, we are good to the town. If there's a tree in the road, we take care of it. We do fix our road somewhat, but I don't think it's our responsibility to have to do this. Uh, we have street lights. I mean, uh, we have, you know, in the past, since 1969, you guys have done this for us, and now you don't. I did find something. If I could hand this to somebody up there, I did find something. Uh, I'm not going to read it out loud, but I will make sure that council gets copies of it. So it says um, NJ 4067-23-1, uh, which permit municipalities to repave, maintain, provide for, and remove of snow and ice and other obstructions from and provide the lighting of any road streets upon which travel is sufficient in the opinion of the town council. Uh, to warrant such expenditures, even though such roads and streets shall not have been taken over by the council or dedicated or accepted as public highways. The following places within the township, and it lists some roads that in Cheesequake that I guess you do take care of that are private roads. But my point is, uh, you've been taking care of for so long, how can you just stop and leave it up to us? Anyone have any... This is really speak on it here. That's why I'm, I'm you know. I'm sorry. We, we're not really supposed to right. engage. Right. That's not, so, you know, we, you come and you're going right. to give us this so information. Previously, years ago, they used to, Obridge had a town grader, which would grade the road, which would 
you know, divert the water to the sides of the road. Obviously, that's what you don't want. Water is what kills all roads. It makes potholes worse and worse and worse. Uh, since the town doesn't have a grader anymore, they do send a backhoe. But, oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Well, thank you for your time. And I don't know who, who I could speak to in the future, maybe. Okay, well, we'll, we'll have to go over this information and then have How, someone reach yeah. out. Someone will reach out? Um, I, you, should I give them information to you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, we can't now. We don't ask for name or any kind of. No, no. Well, that's it's voluntary. No, no, that's fine. But we have to follow the law. <laughs> I was just going to suggest, Council President, maybe um, he could send us um, an email this way. Okay. I mean, with this. Yeah. But I, I don't want to ask his name. <laughs> So strange. Okay. Yeah, sir. Yeah, you did too, right? Okay. Yeah, no, no. You're well. No, no worries. We just got to follow the. <laughs> All right. Is there anyone else? Good evening. Yes, good evening, Council Mayor. Um, just a follow up with my brother. Mm -hmm. Just going, um, basically, it's Joy Lane. It's in. Uh, Ward 6, I see uh, Mr. Murphy's not here this evening to uh, discuss that, but it is Joy Lane down on South Oldbridge, if you want to consider that. Mm -hmm. um, we basically grew up there. We spent our whole lives there and still live there. The question that we have and are wondering why for the past 50, almost 60 years that the town has been taking care of it, and now all of a sudden they're going to say they're not doing it. We hear that, oh, well, it's considered a lane, it's not a road. Well, it may be considered a lane because you guys put the sign there, Joy Lane, going back as far as I can remember, you know, in the late 60s that I remember it was there. It's Joy Lane. Um, there's Vantine's Lane there that was paved, <clears throat> excuse me, many years ago. There's also Soden's Lane. They're all within a half a mile of Joy Lane, and they're all still taken care of by the township. We were just wondering why Joy Lane wasn't doing it. As you had mentioned, someone will reach out to us and discuss the matter, but it's going to be a point pretty soon that it's going to be a safety issue. It's gotten bad enough that we have to pay for water hundreds of yards off of Englishtown Road to do that, there was a house fire two years ago in the back, and the fire department does not have fire hydrants or anything there. They have to get tanker trucks from Englishtown Road, and you know the house was basically demolished because it burnt down. There's no water there. That's irrelevant to what we're doing, but forever, not to say you've been treated like a second-class citizen, but in reality, the town does nothing anymore if you're going to take that away from us from grading it it's bad enough snow plowing has got limited they say oh well we're busy yes we understand you have to do you know the major roads you know going to the schools and taking care of that the lane may not be taken care of for you know one or two days after the snowstorms i mean you know over the years you know thank goodness that we're able to have our own plows and do it ourselves but it really shouldn't be our responsibility. It's you know part of what we pay taxes for, I believe. And the taxes are, there's uh, five homes there. There's uh, four, four of the, there's uh, five homes, we'll say six lots. So of the six lots, there's four of the lots are owned by our family, um, plus multiple acres that are around there. And it's been that way, you know, since the 60s. And we're not asking for much just to take care of the lane. It's roughly uh, 100 yards to the corner and then further. Okay. okay. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We heard this evening. Good evening. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening. I'm not really prepared to speak. I flew out of work really quick to come here. I just want to re reiterate a couple things, mainly the safety of the road, the integrity of the road is awful. Pulling off Englishtown Road onto our road, there's a big gully, 
So as I'm pulling onto the road in the evenings at night after work, 50 to 60% of the time cars are beeping at me because I'm going slow to get onto my road. And likewise, on the opposite way, you can check five to six times to make sure cars aren't coming down the road. And you have a difficult time pulling out. The other safety issues are driving down the road, kicking up rocks if anybody chooses to walk, which is basically you can't walk on the road. There's no form of exercise on that road. Um, just other vehicles, our um, garbage men, it's not safe for them to walk on the road to take our garbage off the edge of our property and put it in. Somebody could break a leg or twist an ankle or what have you. So I just wanted to say that this has been taken care of since the 60s. We're not asking for anything extra. We're just asking for the maintenance we've always had. We even, for a while, had to get our own plow truck because my husband and I are essential workers and we needed to get out. For Sandy, we worked through Sandy. For COVID, we worked through COVID. So we're important to the community and we need to get in and out of our home safely. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Hello, everyone. My, my name, I'm not saying it like last time. OK. Now, in this ordinance, it says that it's a community, because Cheesequake Park and Glenwood, it's communities. We have five homes on, our ha on the road, OK? Now, if, you, if anyone here were to go to that lane or try to drive down, you have children. And my nieces and nephew can't even bring their friends down because they make fun of them because the road is destroyed and they're not going to damage their cars. I mean, it's really pitiful that we have to come here and beg you to do something for our road. Okay, you, you, you come here and you say, oh, you're going to build this beautiful community. What about the people who have been here before and, you know, you're doing nothing for us? That's not fair. It really isn't fair. And, you know... Mr. Lawyer, you are very, you know, like, you know, talkative, and you could say this and this and that, but I have lived in this house in, for my life. I have lived here. The Palmas were next door to us. He's the only person that I really know that has been in this township. I mean, I don't really know a lot of people, but, I mean, we've been here, like, my parents have been here 80 years. That's a long time. Can you guys say that you've been here 80 years? And we have never asked for anything. We, we brought the water in by ourselves. We paid for that. The townships didn't pay for it. And that's like, that's a travesty too because we have no sewers, we have cesspools, okay? You know, like, you think that's right? It's damaging the environment. I mean, really, if we get down, you know, we get down people out here and they're saying the environment because it's toxic, it's waste, okay? That's another, you know, like, and we're drinking the water, when we were having well water and it was being polluted. So that's why we had the water come in to our house, you know, but, you know, like, you're, you know, like, you are supposed to decide for your people who live in the township. We're not, you know, like, and we're begging you. Begging you, and I think it's ridiculous that we have to come here all the time and beg. We're not asking for anything. Somebody came up with a bright idea. Oh, let's not do Joy Lane because Joy Lane is, ah, we could junk them. They're okay. They can stay out there. We don't have to do that. We'll save money. Well, what about all this other stuff that everybody is building? And, and this is getting done. And her, her apartments are beautiful. There are more children, more taxes for all the people in our township. You think that's fair? I don't. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard this evening? Oh, I, I could probably pick this up. Just don't start the timer until I do. <laughs> um, well, first of all, I wanted to wish everybody happy Purim, happy Holy, Ramadan Kareem, and soon to be Easter. It's Holy Week, for those who don't remember. Um, but that, with all of that said, I'm still trying to understand why the council is still allowing Councilman Paschetti to say the prayers. Today, Councilman Paschetti, your last words in prayer were, respect all. So why did you post on Facebook, Democrats are anti-Christian, and anyone who put their name to the column, to that column, are racist, and a bigot and a murderer. The council needs to consider another person, or not 
even have prayers. It's fine. The community needs somebody better. By the way, when they're talking about the, what was it, the near 80 years that they've been paying taxes, they paid in more money than what Vina is speaking about will be paid in in the one year. That's what they've paid in, in taxes, more than three and a half million dollars in taxes since 1969, in my estimate. And, and then the other thing is, is what I'm concerned about is that it's true. I mean, I calculated while I was sitting here, sorry. Um, what I'm, I'm concerned about is last, last meeting, uh, Council, Councilwoman uh, Greenberg Bell, I mentioned that she wanted to know the answer to why the government governor is not giving us more money to the town. Everybody on this council should know, if they don't, that part of the reason is, and they all know because you've been on the council, a lot, lion's share of you guys have been on the council 8, 10, 12 years, that the township has been required to, by the state, reassess the entire town, and you didn't do it. That's first. 35 years we've been sitting for a reassessment. You can shake your head, but like it's not fair to me. You said to me, don't raise my hand. Thank you. Uh, that said, that's the first reason. We need to be reassessed. The second reason is we're losing money right now because besides the 2,500 housing units that uh, Councilman De Palma said, we're going to have a windfall with all the warehouses and not having all the school children. Now we're having 2,500 more houses and 2,500 more kids. We're going to have, what is it? Um, we're going to have, we're, we're still not getting money from the warehouses. We have, it, you never finished the negotiation, right, um, uh, Mr. Rizzoli, on uh, pilot money. It was now pilot money, not reg regular rateables for the 4 million square feet of warehouse space, which would have been money towards our schools our school budget, if it had been rateable money. You guys didn't do that. You went to pilot money. I love the pickleball courts, like my brother-in-law who plays pickleball, but we need, we need the money in our schools. Like everybody is saying, we're losing money every single year because you're not reassessing. All you have to do is reassess. And while I don't want to pay more taxes, last year I paid more than $400 more, even though supposedly we're not, our taxes aren't being raised. We really need to have that done. And then the state will come in and balance the numbers that they're, they're supposed to give us in school budget. Thank you very much. Happy Easter, Ramadan, um, Purim, and, what, and happy holy, everybody. Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard this evening? Okay, seeing no hands, I will close the public portion. Council comments? Councilperson Asatuli. Yes. I um, just want to say hopefully everybody has a happy holiday. And I know there's a lot of stuff going on in town and in the world nowadays. And this, this week and these holidays are about family. A lot of times we look at a lot of problems, right? We all do. Everybody's got silent battles we all can't see, right? We all do. But I took some time to reflect over the last couple of weeks. And what's really important is I think we forget to live in grace, with gratitude. We have food. We open our fridge. And I mean that myself. I have to look at it and say, what am I grateful for? When I open my fridge, I could just grab food right out of my refrigerator. Some people don't have that luxury. I'm able to turn my water on at the drop of a dime. Some people have to travel nine miles to get clean water. We don't have any planes flying over our houses because this is America. and We have freedom. We have veterans that died for this country to give us that freedom. I'm so thankful to be on here, to, to live in this great nation, in this beautiful town, knowing that as many problems as we have, there's always hope. And America and this town has always pushed through. And I always believe the comeback is always better than a setback. And as many things as we all go through, when we all come and we talk amongst each other, I say this weekend when I'm with my family and celebrating the holiday, I'm going to speak a lot about gratitude. I haven't always been that way my whole life. I worked hard for what I, what I have and what I've given to my family, my wife, my two daughters. But I really just want to send a message to everybody here and at home that just take some time, if you can, and really look to be thankful. Because sometimes I miss that. And this weekend and this week, I'm really going to make sure that I am thankful for what God has given me. 
And I truly mean that to every single person. You know, God bless you all. Hope you have a great, great holiday, whatever you celebrate. And um, a little grace, I really mean it. It goes such a long way. So thank you. Councilperson DeCaro. Yes, thank you. Um, first, before I go, um, I don't know. I think you guys have sent emails or whatever. I don't know. I haven't. First time I've heard of, of your situation was the last meeting. So if there's, you know, if you can put all your concerns down in writing and send that, you know, that email, I don't know if it's gone out to anyone. But um, this way, at least there can be, you know, it's in writing. So I can take a to jdecaro at oldbridge.com. That's, it's on the website, the, just an email to the council members. So, so we can, um, but anyway, um, uh, spring is upon us. Our spring holidays are here. Um, we're in the middle of Ramadan and Easter's coming up. And uh, I know Passover is coming up at the end of April. So I wanna wish everyone um, wonderful spring, happy holidays in whatever you celebrate. Um, I wish it would be a little warmer already, but can't control that. Um, I'd also want to say congratulations to our amazing Camp Robin athletes. Um, just always so wonderful when they come in and receive their their awards. You know, they're just such a such a wonderful uh, group of uh, students. And um, COVID Awareness Month, you know, it's that's a it's a wonderful thing that um, that you've done. Uh, Mayor Walker, and um, I wanted to ask, I know, I think within the past year, um, there was somebody that came to one of our meetings asking about, I believe it was a butterfly garden, I don't know if you remember, um, maybe in Control Farms they wanted to see. Uh, I don't remember, do you remember? That was the gentleman for tonight, he wanted a that, marker, and we're putting a marker at Control okay. for COVID. Okay, yes. great, great, that's just awesome, awesome. Um, anyway, um, also congratulations to Lieutenant Mazaluski and Sergeant Hamill on their promotions. Wonderful. Um, and, um, and I believe that is it. Hopefully we'll, uh, we'll see you all next meeting. Thank you. Councilperson De Palma. Thank you. So just congratulations again to our Camp Robin, um, Olympians, you know, it's great things, good things that you're doing, on not only on the, the Special Olympics, on the speed skating, but on everything you're going to achieve. You know, programs like that is really what set Old Bridge apart, as well as our residents that utilize them. So it's a great thing to see them up here. It's a great thing to see them that they're utilizing all the facilities that we have, and we have those facilities to, to offer up to our community. Um, and also, congratulations to the newly minted sergeant and lieutenant. Um, congratulations on, on moving up. We are looking forward to working more with you as you move on into your leadership positions. And happy Easter to everybody. Enjoy the, the weekend with your family if you are celebrating. And for all our students and faculty, have a wonderful spring break and please have fun and be careful. Thank you. Councilperson Garcia. Yes, thank you. I'd like to wish everybody a happy Easter. That's all. Thank you. Councilperson Pasquitti. No comment. Thank you. Council Vice President, Dr. greenberg Belle. Yes, I think it's wonderful when we do see um, the athletes and uh, the students from the Camp Robin. It's wonderful to see them here, but also I always think of all the dedication and commitment that all the volunteers, the time they put in, the patience, the dedication, and I respect them very much for doing that and appreciate that. Um, I wanna wish everyone a happy spring. I want to wish everyone a happy Easter and peace be with you. Thank you. Council President Sohar. Yeah, I also, Camp Robin is an absolutely wonderful, wonderful program. And I think that, the, as Dr. Greenberg said, the people who volunteer are very special and they are wonderful. And without them, what would Old Bridge be? So that's the good things. And the promotion of the officers, I'm glad to see that as well. And I think that overall, you know, things are, spring is here, and hopefully things are going to get better and better as we go along. And we'll see what's going to be. So I'd like to wish everyone a happy holiday season, whichever holiday applies, and have a very, very good evening. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> 
So we need a, a motion to adjourn and enter into executive sessions for matters regarding contract negotiations. Second. Okay, moved by Dr. Greenberg. Bella, you Second by one? Mr. De Palma. Yeah. Okay. Roll call. Councilperson Asatuli. Yes. Councilperson DeCaro. Yes. Councilperson De Palma. Yes. Councilperson Greenberg. Garcia. Yes. Councilperson Pasquitti. Yes. Council Vice President Dr. Greenberg Belle. Yes. Council President Sohar. Yes. Seven yeses. Adjourn at 8.35 p.m. Yeah, 8.35.